What's going on everyone? It's David Schlothauer here and I hope you're having a very fantastic Tuesday on March the 5th, 2024. In today's detailed weather breakdown, we're going to be looking at the severe weather that is expected on Thursday into Friday with the potential for tornadoes large hail and damaging wind potential we're not looking at a strong tornado threat though but we're looking at an elevated risk for severe weather so in today's weather breakdown we will do everything that you need to know to get prepared for what's to come but before i do get started please consider subscribing if you haven't already to stay up to date with the weather near you hitting the like button and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media so here's a look at the very latest european model for thursday morning March the 7th 2024 in the next couple of days for Oklahoma for Kansas we do have some pop-up showers and thunderstorms these are going to likely be elevated so in terms of tornado threats we're not going to see that happening until Thursday afternoon so once we get into that period we can see some of the showers over Texas do look to pop up also into Missouri Arkansas as well as Kansas but where that warm front sets up south of that that's where we have the warm sector surface based storms that's where we have the highest tornado potential part of this weather system and then it continues all the way to Friday morning some surface based storms likely for southeastern Texas again tornado threat really is going to be out there and about for Louisiana Mississippi by Friday afternoon heavy rainfall maybe some flood concerns out of this as we're going to have a lot of deep tropical or subtropical moisture. And then, of course, look at the snowfall over the Rocky Mountains there for your Friday. And then um, that kind of shuts down by the time we go into Saturday morning. But still, this weather system moving across the Great Lakes into the uh, Ozarks, into the Appalachians, into the southeast, um, definitely going to be an impactful early part of the weekend while the west begins to dry out slowly but surely and then that system continues to march eastward by the time we go into saturday into sunday yeah i might see some snow late season snow for early march standards there over vermont new hampshire and maine and then as we go and look at the west here for oregon washington and northern california there's gonna be another system but again these systems are gaining latitude as we go into spring because meteorological spring has officially started about five days ago and that means the jet stream goes north these systems are not as strong as they would be if it was like january or february but still nevertheless we're going to get some chances in there of some showers nothing too significant like what we just got done dealing with while looking at the northeast that system still marches on through bringing some colder air and snow chances while the midwest will still be some uh, still have some warmer temperatures but i don't see anything in the way of severe weather which is good while the west is going to have their next good system to deal with so now let's take a look at why i think we're going to have the best chances of severe weather what is our trough doing so this will look at the 500 millibar cyclonic relative vorticity so this is how much spin there is in the atmosphere so once we go forward in time we can see there is our jet stream disturbance right here a little bit of a negatively tilted short wave by friday but notice there is some vorticity and some divergent flow aloft here so we got some lifting we got the moisture in place i think we're going to definitely see some strong thunderstorms out of this even so this is not a super dynamic negatively tilted trough and more so it's going to be kind of a positive to neutral uh, tilted um majiggy and that's going to help get our storms um, our storms to fire up but now there could be a phase up by this weekend as you can see here over wisconsin over the great lakes there's that trough that comes out of canada we're gotten some jet stream energy to the south and so this phase up looks to happen over the northeast and that's why i think we're gonna have a more dynamic system strong winds colder temperatures to deal with while shortwave ridging returns so now let's take a look at our ingredients what is coming together for this severe weather event for thursday into friday well i've talked about this in yesterday's video we're gonna have speed shear and directional shear that means there's a speed change with height and we have um, directional change with height as well so in to put this into simple terms let's kind of draw our little photograph here well kind of a photograph in a way 
So let's just say we have winds in Dallas at 16 miles an hour, right? So they're blowing out of this direction. So when we go and look at the low level flow, this is at 850 millibars. So this is at 5,000 feet above the atmosphere. And we're gonna use blue for this one. So winds are doing this in the low levels of the atmosphere. So more out of kind of the southwesterly direction. And then let's take a look now at our upper level wind pattern, right? We'll use red for this one. So we can see that our flow is doing this. So if you kind of think about this, you connect the dots, right? You just follow the dots. You can see our hodographs look like that. You just draw a line from the surface and you connect, you know, dot to dot. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get curved photographs, and that means directional and speed shear with height. And that helps organize the supercells. But not only that, our moisture quality is going to improve, especially Thursday night into Friday. We have dew points in the low 60s, in the middle 60s, in the further south into Texas you go. We got 70 degree dew points in, say, Corpus Christi and Houston, Texas. Whereas, you, again, you go into northern Texas, upper 50s, low 60s, and Oklahoma, you got mid 50s. So the moisture quality, it's going to be, it's going to be there, you know, going to be modest. Now let's take a look at our surface based instability. This is CAPE. All right, convective available potential energy. How much energy is in the atmosphere for potential thunderstorms? This is what we call thunderstorm juice. And we're going to have enough of it. So when we look at this, um, anywhere between 500 to say 1,000 joules per kilogram, this is surface base cape. So we got enough energy out there for storms, especially right in here in the central Texas into central Oklahoma. And that is why what you're about to see here, the Storm Prediction Center has issued that slight risk for severe weather. In fact, speaking of that, let's take a look at our day three outlook and specifically if we uh, let's go into say the texas region because i want to cover a lot here there is that slight risk all the way say from if you're in south uh, southwestern oklahoma if you're in central northern texas central texas near austin texas you're under a slight risk for severe weather this is driven by a non-sig i want to repeat that i want to make it clear there is no significant probabilistic forecast or probabilistic in terms of tornadoes, hail, or whatever, right? This is a just a kind of a typical 15% risk for severe weather. But this does include the possibility for a tornado or two, some large hail, and some gusty winds, okay? So I want to make sure I really clarify on that very well in this video. Now, another thing that you all will be able to feel will be the continued warm temperatures. This is for Thursday afternoon on March the 7th, okay, leading up to that severe weather threat in the afternoon evening hours. Look at these temperatures in Texas. We're talking low 70s to low 80s in some spots. Look at this, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida you're going to join in on the upper 70s to lower 80s. So some really warm temperatures coming. And then if you want to find the upper 80s, you will have to go down towards the McAllen area in southern Texas. So yeah, time to get the short sleeves out. Time to get the shorts out because you're going to need it. Even in Illinois, upper 50s to lower 60s. Not as warm as it is uh, like it was yesterday, but still on the warmer side nevertheless. These temperatures are definitely above average, anywhere between 5 to 15 degrees above normal for many spots on Thursday into Friday. We could have more daily records, while the West enjoys some below average temperatures still for early March standards. Now I have five exciting announcements to share with you all that are wondering, what am I going to do next with my YouTube channel? Well, we're going to celebrate. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. On Monday, April the 8th, 2024, it's coming up within the next 35 days. We're gonna, there's gonna be a total solar eclipse happening across the Texas, Oklahoma area. It's gonna go all the way up into the Northeast. I'm driving to Texas and to Kerrville on the 3rd, and I'm gonna stay there through the 11th because this is going to be such an exciting event. 
that you all need to tune into. So make sure you have the, you marked your calendars on this because this is going to be very exciting. Also, I'm going to be setting up a April 2nd Solar Eclipse planning Q&A live stream. If you all want to join me on what my plans are for this, what am I going to do with equipment? Am I going to set up any cameras? Be sure to um, join me for that. It's going to be very exciting. The third announcement is my first Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Outlook will be released on Monday, April the 15th at 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You do not want to miss that. That's going to be exciting, and I cannot wait to share my predictions with you all. And then, of course, my first routine tropical weather outlook will begin on Monday, or no, wait, not on Monday, but May 25th, and will run through the 1st of November. Now, if you all want to join Weather Force today, there is a link in the description below this video. If you like to hang out with me, if you want to get to know a lot of people, there is a link in the description below this video. All right. And also, the last announcement is if you want to follow me on Twitter for latest updates, there is also a link in the description below this video. But otherwise, Thank you all for tuning in, tuning in to today's detailed weather forecast, severe weather in this term. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. As always, have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'll be back in the weather office tomorrow.